Ooh, it is hard to line that up sometimes. All right, TV Musings, Almost Human, Season 1, Top 10-ness. Hey everyone, it is Shannon. I'm doing a new kind of thing, idea. Um, not quite sure exactly what I'm going to call it, but it's something along the lines of like 10 things I really liked about the season of... You know, but something a little catchier. And since Almost Human just wrapped up, I thought I would do Almost Human because I really enjoyed the show. Now, this is going to be spoilery, so please, it's, you know, if it's for if you've seen it. And there are a couple key things that are on my list that are like, whoa! So you don't want to, you don't want to be spoiled. So this is really for people who've watched and enjoyed the show. You know, if you haven't seen it, I would just highly recommend it. Honestly, 13 episodes from season one. If you like science fiction, it's a great series. <laughs> so, and if you need a little like, what is it about, Shannon? Well, it's set in the near future where technology is a lot more, mm, I don't want to say pervasive, but I don't think, I think that's not quite the right term, a lot more uh, integrated into humans and their lives. And um, it's about a cop who has uh they, do they call them robots? Hmm. Robot partner. But the robot, both, both the robot and the cop are a little bit different than all other cops and robots, which is why they were put together. So, yeah, there. Go watch it. See you in 13 episodes. See ya. Um, but anyway, so almost, so it stars Carl Urban and Michael Ely. And um, yeah, let's get started. I think I'm just going to do li this listy format. And I'm doing it 10 to 1. Number 10, my 10th favorite thing about season 1 of Almost Human was actually, to be honest, is technically my draw to the show, which is Carl Urban on TV. Sign me up, of course. Carl Urban in science fiction on TV, of course. Um, I really like him as an actor. I enjoy his performances and everything I've seen. So I was like, yeah, awesome. And in the show, he plays the human, John Kennex, who ends up, he has a... a what do you call it? A robot prosthetic? A prosthetic leg that's robotic, I guess. And he's not really happy about that. He's very surly, and uh, he does a great job of being surly. So that's my number one. N or number ten. My number nine. Ninth thing I like about Almost Human is, although there is a bit of a proceduralness there you know they play cops and you know there's often a crime to solve each week it doesn't feel like a procedural I avoid most procedurals um, and even though you know most of them I would say probably there's only a couple that have sort of pieces as part of the bigger puzzle um, they it's actually exploring an issue talking about an issue and the humanity of that issue or the distance from of humanity of that issue which is i think a lot of those two things are a lot of the discussion in the show like what is human you know do we retain our humanity do we not what where's the line Te with that and technology and people maybe I, I didn't think about that too much before i said it so i'm, I'm not totally sure if i believe that <laughs> i think that's there i don't know if that's you know the only thing that's here. There's lots there. Okay, going on. Number eight thing I like about Almost Human. Consistency. Okay, okay. So that's a bit of a sleeper win, but for me, I don't care because honestly, I love the first show pretty much the same amount as I love the second show, as I love the third show, as it's the fourth episode. Like As the series went on, I continued to enjoy it as much. Sure, there was an episode here or there I didn't like the theme or the, like the sex bots, not interested, but it does it isn't along the lines that make sense in that world. Yeah, yeah, sure it does. D but overall, every episode was just as strong as the one before it, and that is very, very exciting and kept the integrity of the show, which not all shows this season I think did. Sleepy Hollow, I'm looking at you. Um, great start, kind of like as it went on. Mm, I still enjoyed it, but it kind of broke down a little bit. Almost Human, every episode was just as strong as the last one. All right, number seven. I have six and seven there. i got to keep the six for later. Uh, number seven about Almost Human, I enjoyed the tech. I really did. I loved how it felt futuristic enough that it was a logical leap, um, but accessible enough that you understand why someone would use it or how it would be used. There were there were definitely things that were a little further out there than that, which was exciting as well, but it never felt so, like, anything that was, like, it always, it always felt on the edge, like, on the edge of what we can do 
and then a couple more generations. I don't remember how long it's supposed to be set in the future, or if they ever say. I think it just says in the future. So that's that's it's more about why people use it, or or and how it's used, or misused, or illegally used. But then then it is about the creation of. There is some stuff about that, and there is some some lines it crosses, which are some of the interesting mysteries. But overall, I thought the tech was really good. So there we go. Number six. Number six thing I liked about Almost Human. I like that we don't know everything about every character. We get a lot about Dorian and a lot about Kenex, but a lot of the other characters in the story um, we get minor development on. Um, Stahl, who plays the female detective, and Rudy, who's sort of like the, he's the scientist guy. How come they, okay, one question, how can they only have one person that does all the forensics? Like, that's inconsistent that just that doesn't that feels a bit odd like he's like the guy in the basement he kind of feels like what's like um research and development but he's only one person like he doesn't have any co-workers that anyway so anyway but i like that we we know something about him but not tons about them both of them had these developments that felt like whoa there is so much behind their character and we don't know like we don't know stall they she's a chrome and i'm like what, what is that? Like, it came up in a, later in the season episode. I'm like, they talked about that. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. She's different, but how? But why? What does that What does that mean? And But it was consistent, like, and different. I like that. And, say, and with Rudy, it's like, you don't know his motivations at all. That becomes pretty clear. I do wish that we had a little bit more about Paul, who's the, the guy detective, um, and um, he gets mostly poked fun at. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I don't. We don't know too much about him. But there's room for that. And then Maldonado, the captain played by Lily Taylor, who I love. I've loved her since I saw her in Mystic Pizza oh so many years ago. Um, and um, we don't know much about her. And I would like to know more about her. So, yeah. So there's room for more there. But that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, and number five. Still with the numbers. Number five thing I like about Almost Human is. Oh, this was a surprise. Maybe I'm making like a five, like a thing I didn't like so much. <laughs> but because I'm surprised that there was not that much development in the long term arc. I often think of shows as sort of procedural or long term arc. That doesn't mean they are. There are other formats, but those are sort of the two that I think of in terms of genre television. Um, but there isn't. Like, we start off with John, you know, for Kenix, like, there's this, you know, thing with his girlfriend and he thinks she's dead and then looks like she's not dead and then looks like he betrayed him but she betrayed him for what exactly is she part of some organization are there organizations you know he does he does go through some regression therapy or you know kind of enhanced therapy stuff to find out more but we don't find out more <laughs> So there's kind of like, huh. So there isn't that much development there. And then they do leave pieces for other stuff, which I will get to in number four. And I was so impressed by, very late in the season, we have this whole thing about over the wall. Over the wall of what? The city? The city's encased? The city has walls? What's over there? Who's over there? Why do people go over there? It's clear that they don't expect the survival rate to be good over there. But, like, the guy from Night Court goes over there. I can't remember the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm showing my age. Um, there's this whole over-the-wall thing. What does that mean? What's And then all of a sudden you realize, what is this society like? Is it a city-state? Is it... Do, does, there's no tourists. There's no traveling. So does anyone leave? How many societies are there? How many cities are there? What, you realize you have no idea, you know, or even where they get their resources. Or is everything just recharged, regenerated, recycled? I don't know. But the thing is, again, consistency. There was nothing to indicate that they weren't enclosed. So it fit. But also they didn't resolve it. Like it's just sort of this this gaping mystery. It's like, but what's over there? <laughs> so mystery, mystery, mystery. Including continuing with mystery in number three. I'm like, where is that shadow coming from? Where is it coming from? <laughs> anyway, it's bothering me. I don't want a shadow. There we go. Three. Mystery of what the heck is going on with Dorian's memory. And we don't find out. We he ha it looks like he has these dormant these these memories that are his memories, but it looks like it looks like it's him as a kid. It could be another kid, but 
he's a robot. He assumed it was he's a robot started fully grown, fully sized. So where are those memories? And what the heck is Rudy doing tinkering with them? And mucking mucking around with them when he's asleep now and before he was regenerated or re like reconstituted, that's not the right word. Um, re reactivated. What's going on? And why are they keeping it from him? It looks like Kenix finds out about it, but they keep it from him. And that was actually in terms of a theme or something to explore. That was really heavy. I'm like, if they're his memories, they should not be kept from him. And I love, and that leads me actually right into number two, favorite thing about Almost Human Season 1, and that is Michael Ealy's performance as Dorian. He has so much humanity in him and he brings up really like really important questions like if that you know if that's his memory he's entitled to do it and when you draw the line and when you cross the line and when it's not okay to cross the line for things like privacy and you know uh, what you can or can't do with someone or a robot and all those kinds of things. I thought it was fascinating because he's much more human than the I think they're called the mechs, the standard robots that are with the police force. So you feel, you know, you feel for him. And he's the emotional core of the show. He's the one who senses what's going on in the room, recognizes the emotional atmosphere and tension or whatever it may be. And, and like really, you know, brings to light that it's relevant and important to acknowledge and process and work with that in the situation. So I really, really like that. He's and he's so good. He had me from the first like, hey man, blah 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 blah. And every time he says man, I laugh. Like it's just like the relaxed nature of his character is so good. But my number one thing that I love about the show, number one not shadow free thing I love about Almost Human is the chemistry between Kenex and Dorian. It's just great. It's so great. Kenex is so surly and Dorian is so positive and they just clash at every every time they can but there's not it's not usually malicious it's you know it's just a bumpy road and it just they just hit each other all the time no, they don't fight all the time but they like just butts up against each other no they don't do that they just whatever like the chemistry is beautiful and brilliant and it's really nice to see you know they're both really great actors and I really enjoy them in in the show and they really make it just a joy to watch I think one of the, for, I gotta say, for loving the show, and I know so many people that have watched the show and enjoyed it, and everyone I know has stuck with it, it started very late in November, which is very unusual, and did very, pretty, it did really, it's pretty well in the ratings, like there's always that first episode drop off, but after that, it did very, very good, and... But we haven't heard about a renewal, so I really hope it gets renewed, and uh, I will be keeping my ear to the ground. It is a little early, um, you know, to know. Uh, we, it's not, I don't worry until we get into sort of May, but uh, considering how well it, it ran through a very odd time period, why don't we know? I want to know! <laughs> so, yeah, so that is what I liked about Almost Human, my top 10-ish things about Almost Human. I Let me know if you watch the show, if you enjoy the show. I really hope you didn't watch to the end if you haven't seen the show, but, you know, you can do what you want <laughs> in that respect. Um, you know, are you, are you looking forward to it? Uh, being re Like, are you hoping it's renewed? Do you think it'll be renewed? Am I? Is that just me? I think it should be renewed, because I like it, so I'm biased, but, you know... Yeah, and all right, do you like? Did you like this format, this kind of series? Because uh, I'm thinking about doing it when shows wrap up. Um, if I have at least ten things that I loved about them, so we'll see how it goes. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>